Welcome back, everyone. You're watching We Heart Therapy, the special series EFT Talk. I'm your host, Dr. Annabelle Bugatti, licensed marriage and family therapist and certified emotionally focused couples therapist. And hopefully by the time you're watching this, I'll be a certified EFT supervisor. Yes. And we have, we are in studio today, actually. We are doing a special edition of EFT Talk today. And I have some very exciting and special guests today. So we're gonna throw it up a little bit. And we're doing this, you know, just for you guys. And so today we have Ed Peterson. He's an LCSW and he is co-founder of the EFT Clinic in Salt Lake City, Utah. We also have Wesley Little. She's in Charlotte, North Carolina, and she writes a fabulous blog, Becoming a Therapist. If you haven't read it, guys, it is fabulous. She it just is. is. Yeah. Yes, it is fabulous. Thanks, guys. She's an amazing writer, really captures the essence of what it's like to go through learning EFT. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today, is what is it like to learn EFT, what drew us to the model. We're just going to talk about this very exciting sometimes frustrating, invigorating process of becoming an EFT therapist. So to start it off, guys, um, why don't you tell everyone a little bit, talk about your story as to how you found EFT, what your impression of the externship was? Before I found EFT, I had been um, a practicing therapist for five to seven years. Um, and I was doing a lot of couples work, a lot of family work, um, and also a lot of in, individual work. A lot of my background was in addiction. And what I found was that I loved couples work and family work some of the time. And a lot of the time it was so hard. And I felt like I almost had no grip. And these sessions, especially with couples, they would blow up and I really felt like I didn't know what to do. Right, mm -hmm. And so I was actually talking to a friend, um, a really wonderful therapist, a woman named Amanda Thomas from Idaho, and she heard that I, was going, that I was doing couples work, and she said, Ed, drop everything you're doing, go to an externship and learn EFT. And I respected her enough to say, okay. And so three weeks later, I jumped on a plane, went to uh, St. Louis, and had an amazing externship experience with uh, Debbie Shimeka Diaz mm -hmm. and Ryan Rana. Mm -hmm. And um, that was two and a half years ago, and that was just the beginning of a whole journey for me. And I tell you, I'm so glad that I did it. That's wonderful. Now, the names that he mentioned, Debbie Shemeka Diaz, she's one of our beloved trainers in New Jersey. And Ryan Rana is in Arkansas. He's another one of our fabulous trainers. And so, you know, tell us a little bit about how you found EFT. So I kind of have an opposite story in that I had no desire to work with couples at all. I thought it was way too hard. I only saw individuals. And then someone invited me to go to a live session um, with Lori Brubaker, who is a trainer out of Greensboro, North she's Carolina. Amazing. So yes. amazing. So amazing. <laughs> I don't even think she's human. I don't, I don't know how. Like, she's otherworldly EFT. Yes. Um, yes. And so... I just popped into a live session and like, I mean, my jaw was on the floor. I had never seen a therapist do that kind of therapy. Um, just the tracking and the reflection and the empathy and the warmth. And so I thought as frightened as I am with working with couples, like that's the next level of therapy. So right, right. I saw her and then I read the book and I just thought like, this is the future. This is the future of couples therapy. And so mm -hmm. I started um, the, long and passionate and torturous journey of becoming right. an EFT right. therapist. Right. <laughs> and which book did you read? Um, so I read Sue Johnson's classic... Um, Hold Me Tight? No, it's the one for therapists. Becoming an EFT yeah, therapist. Yeah. Becoming, becoming an, an EFT, EFT therapist, therapist. Yeah. 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 Yes, which is available online and has a case book, a mm -hmm. workbook. Yeah. Um, and well, well, mm -hmm. and I'm also going to jump in on one, on one thing that you said that was part of what I what really drew me was that mm -hmm. I went to the e externship and I saw life, right? Yeah, and it yeah. was one that Debbie did. And the thing that blew me away was, one, how like, close they were sitting and how the therapist seemed so involved mm -hmm. and she seemed so emotional. And to see the tears and see the emotion, it, seemed, it was totally different because I came from this you know, training of being sort of a detached therapist, very cognitive. And when I saw her digging into the emotions, I was like, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really love that part. And, you know, when I found EFT, actually, I was a master's student. So I was living on Long Island with my husband, and uh, I was going to LIU CW Post. 
I actually started my master's in Southern California, where I'm from originally. I um, was working on my degree in marriage and family therapy, and life circumstances shifted us to Long Island, and I ended up uh, having to jump into another licensed track master's program where I could still see couples and maintain the route. Um, and New York, you know, Long Island, of course, anyone who lives there knows how accessible Manhattan is. And there's a lot of amazing trainings available in Manhattan. I mean, you have the Gestalt Institute, you have the Institute for Personality, the Albert Ellis Institute, um, you have the Ackerman Institute. I mean, just trainings all the time. And it, it was really amazing. And I found in my master's program, you know, we're doing our internships and we're working on these sites that, you know, I sort of had like this glimpse of what therapy should look like based on TV shows um, and, and discussions. But I really, you know, the first time you step into a therapy room, it's like someone just pulled the rug out from underneath right. you and you're like, what do I do now? <laughs> so I had... I don't remember how I found out, but I saw, I think it was through the Ackerman Institute that Sue Johnson was coming to do an externship training for couples. And since I had gone through a divorce uh, in my 20s, I was passionate about working with couples from my own experience in marriage counseling. And I thought, you know, this is really exciting to attend a training that is run by the person who pioneered the model. You know, if Freud had been alive, it would have been fascinating right. to be able to go have discussion right. with him, right? So I'm like, oh, awesome. Somebody who's still alive that's teaching their model. Let's <laughs> right. go. <That's> awesome. <laughs> so I went to Manhattan and I took the training and it was amazing. Like, you know, for anybody that's that's, been in relationships and loves with their whole heart and has been the one who is told that they're putting too much of their heart out there or they're clingy, you know, something's wrong with you for wanting to be close with the person you're in a relationship with, which feels very crazy making when you're the one in the relationship. And when I sat in that externship and I heard Sue Johnson talking about bonding and attachment, that it's normal, right? Mm -hmm. That there is nothing mm -hmm. pathological about me for wanting mm -hmm. to be close to the person I love and that I'm not clingy. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, this is for me, amen. <laughs> you know, I, you know, it just, it spoke to my heart and it just felt like such a good fit. And, you know, the inside of me just burst into happiness and acceptance and freedom and hearing that we could be ourself, you know, just everything that the externship talked about made more sense than anything else I ever learned. And the fact that it gives you that step by step, I'm like, okay, good. Now I know if I go into a therapy session, here's what to do, here's what to ask, here's where to go. Here's the end point eventually, what we're hoping for, you know, not just some vague idea. You know, I don't know what your guys' clinical training was like in your master's programs. Sure. Well, I mean, one thing that, that jumps out at me that I always try to tell people, because I have a lot of people who ask me, like, how was your training? What's it like to do mm -hmm. EFT? Is that I, I always tell people that my experience has been sort of kind of love-hate mm -hmm. in that I learned early on doing EFT is that yes, it made sense and all the things that you said made sense to me. It even made sense with my relationship and I, I learned a lot. But then as I started to do it, I realized that it's really hard, right? Mm -hmm. And that it, because what it takes is more of a vulnerable emotional stance as mm -hmm. the therapist, mm -hmm. pretty quickly, um, especially after I did the externship and then came back thinking, oh, I'm going to do some great EFT therapy mm -hmm. and then start to work with couples, I did see some things changing, mm -hmm. right? But it was just this really interesting um, emotional e experience. And I hear a lot of therapists talk about this. It's like, yes, we're growing and we're having great, sometimes difficult, sometimes w wonderful experiences with our clients. But also, it, it for me, it, it affects me so much personally. Mm -hmm. And in my relationship with my wife, where I tend to be a pursuer, right? Mm -hmm. Where I tend to have a little bit of that in in anxiety. Really? It's, You're a pursuer, Ed? I, I would have never thought. I am a pursuer, <laughs> yes. And uh, and uh, sometimes shame, I feel shame about it, right? Um, <laughs> but um, it's just, I, I think that's what I love about if you is it makes so much sense. But it also, it's like this weird thing in that it's like, yes, I'm growing and I know that we're helping and working with clients to do that great work, but it's also like this work inside of me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. 
What about for you, Wesley? You know, my, my grad program really emphasized the um, vulnerable interpersonal dynamics, so I felt like it gave me a leg up with EFT in that way. Right. But it, it definitely focused way more on individual therapy where you are really walking next to someone kind of down like a path in the woods, mm -hmm. right? And I think that, you know, EFT helps which I think is a very difficult balance as a couples therapist to feel like you are both the process guide, right? Like you are the director of the process mm -hmm. and you're really like next to a little bit behind the client in mm -hmm. like helping evoke it from them and helping mm -hmm. them feel like they're the ones kind of leading that process. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a tricky balance, and I think mm -hmm. I, the more I learn with EFT, the better I get at it. But yeah, so I really, I really had, and I'm still learning. Like, mm -hmm. how do I have that assertiveness with mm -hmm. also the, you know, gentleness? Yeah. Right. I mean, that's an experience that I've had is is I because I've noticed that to become better at EFT, I do have to find a way to be more assertive but still do it in a kind and loving way but, mm -hmm. but like you're saying and i've heard sue say that about you know, what really we're trying to orchestrate certain bonding moments right. and that and that doesn't just happen if i sit back i need to make sure that i'm assertive right yeah. and i think the self of the therapist issues kind of you guys are talking about and really this is like self of the therapist perspective right. Right. <laughs> um, you know, I think a lot of us struggle with if I interrupt them, are they going to get really angry and upset and feel like I'm stepping on their toes? Oh, we don't want to see this therapist again. She just walks all over me and doesn't want to listen to what I say. And so we're like, oh, I didn't want to interrupt you, but I really need to. <laughs> right. Right, right. <laughs> well, and I think we often hear people who really feel unheard. I mean, they both feel unheard, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And. And so then I, I really have to walk that balance mm -hmm. of like, okay, I'm hearing you. I gotta like cut off right. this content exit. I've gotta manage this, right. manage that. But I think EFT, you know, what I try to use with that is just the transparency of like, mm -hmm. oh, I hate interrupting you here, but mm -hmm. like I really want to stay yeah. focused on this. Right. And it's usually okay, but it's it's kind of counterculture. Like it's not how we usually yeah. talk to yeah. loved ones. And so right. it, it takes getting used to. Well, yeah. well you know, and for me, I. I remember really well when I watched a uh, Sue Johnson, um, a live that she did with a couple, um, they were uh, military, he was a uh, helicopter pilot. And I remember watching Sue and seeing like the way that she interrupted, right? She was just so good at reflecting mm -hmm. and validating. But as I look at really great mm -hmm. trainers and I look at tapes, it just seems that one of the ways that they that, that we learn to pace the sessions is just by doing more reflection and val validation, which does mm -hmm. slow it down, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I, I feel like in my own work that I could still reflect even more. Right, and EFT really, I mean, to do these things well is really an art form, mm -hmm. which I feel like EFT really helps you master. And you know, it is, I like how you said that balance, being able to interrupt them, but also let them know that they're heard and have them walk away feeling like we heard them. And that's where the, you know, I learned from the trainers, the reflection comes into is that when you can kind of track what they're saying and reflect it, they feel very heard. And that's really exciting because you can also keep better control of the pace in a way that feels more polite but also, you know, make sure that they feel heard, which is, you know, really awesome. But, you know, let's, let's talk, you brought up a lot of really good points and it's sort of about, you know, you, you get, you go through the externship, you feel really inspired and empowered. And, you know, a lot of us, we wanna continue the journey. Um, I think also part of why I chose to continue the journey was because they said, you know, of course nothing is, is 100% a one size fits all, but as close as you can get to that is EFT. And there is an answer in the model for everything. And I sort of challenged myself, okay, well, if this, you know, cause EFT already integrates humanistic, the gestalt, you know. Um, so I thought, okay, I'm gonna really challenge myself. If this model can do it, I'm gonna figure out how to do that. Find the answers within the model and really become a better therapist. But that sounded so good in theory. And then I get out of the externship and I go into my first, you know, therapy session with a the couple and I'm like, 
Oh, the first was so like, hard. I got it, I got it. Uh, I don't got it. <laughs> What's well, like well, for you guys? Well, you see, and that's, uh, I, right, and I feel like I got a, a huge blessing, and I don't know where it came from, but my experience was the same, because I went the externship, and I was super excited, but I felt like I was drinking from a fire hose, you know? Sure. And then I remember the very last day I went up to the trainer and I basically said, okay, what's the next step? What do I really need to do to master this? And Debbie and Brian just said, go home, start taping sessions, sign up for core skills, get a supervisor. And I, you know, at this stage in my career, I really don't, didn't feel, I don't feel like I have a whole lot of time to waste, you know, because mm -hmm. um, I'm not 22 anymore. And, um, and so I did that. I went home and got connected up right away with, Rebecca Jorgensen, an amazing trainer oh, who we love. So um, amazing. And she recommended an amazing therapist named Debbie Gilmore, who mm -hmm. became my sup su my supervisor, who was also amazing. Thank mm -hmm. you, Debbie. And Debbie and Becca are doing some exciting things in the EFT. Stay tuned for that. All right. You know, and I started to do that work with Debbie and also with my now my present uh, partner, Christine Holding. Right. But mm -hmm. but that's what I did is I just decided I needed to start taping. Mm -hmm. And also when I started taping, things really changed because at first it was really painful, like super painful when I saw those first tapes because I was so at first, critical. I ah, like I still can't watch my tapes. I know, I know, I know. It. It's hard. It is so hard. But I guess the thing that, that, that just happened to me, and this is the advice that I give other therapists, is that you have to break through that because at least in EFT, for me, the learning only happens when I'm doing supervision. And I'm watching those tapes, and I agree. Sometimes I want to just crawl. I just want to lie on the ground and just right. scream when I see them. It's a very vulnerable process, and it's I think so that's what a lot of therapists talk about, right? It's that vulnerability and watching your work, watching your tapes, and it's like Nike, just do it, yeah. right. right? What was it like for you to start taping? Yeah, I mean, oh man, I think I think it's so necessary and and so challenging, and I think, I mean, I think the thing that helps me a lot is having a supervisor who I've developed a relationship with. I mean, I really believe in, in really dedicated supervision. Um, thank you, Felicia Friesen. Love you. Um, because like, I mean, I have to, I have to be able to go in and be so vulnerable. Like, I have to go in and cry and tell her how much I feel like I messed something up and talk about my shame in that and show her the tape and have her have empathy for me, but also keep the eye on the ball, which she does a great job of. Um, so I, I, the only thing that helps me push through it is knowing how helpful it is. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Because it sucks, it's always gonna suck. You, you just have to do it, like you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's like what did Bre uh, Bre Brene Brown said mm -hmm. too. Something was like, just deal with the suck or just oh, yeah. ac accept the suck or embrace the suck. There right? you go, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I mean, EFT doesn't suck, but no, no, no you know no, no. the vulnerability about watching your own tapes. Sometimes that sucks. <laughs> Not gonna lie, and it, it is a very vulnerable process. And part of what I love about EFT is, you know, I don't know for you guys, but a lot of the ethics and core values that we're taught about being a therapist is about being congruent and authentic. And I think no other model of counseling helps you become that person and that kind of therapist better than EFT. Because to do EFT well means you have to do the work because mm -hmm. it is so personal and so deep and so vulnerable. You cannot run into these places or walk into these places with your clients unless you've walked into those places yourself. And right. if you haven't, eventually you will run into the elephant in the room that you've not been dealing with and it will come up because it impacts the work, you right. know? Like if you're an anxious right. pursuer or a withdrawer, mm -hmm. I know, you know, I made sort of made this mistake, my little anxious pursuer, he came out, you know, having a young face, I'm older than I look, <laughs> but you know, it's always been the struggle for people, older folks to take me seriously. Mm. And, oh, you're, you're so young, do you really know how to help us? And oftentimes I would feel some clients start to target me and feel like they were attacking me and that little anxious pursuer would go into fight mode and I'd like fight back and then I'm like oh no what did I do <laughs> you know worked with my supervisor figured out what that was about mm -hmm. but you know tell us about what you see with the withdrawers what they yeah. what happens for them well I mean the, the thing that jumps out at me is that again the, I feel like the supervision um, has really saved my bacon a lot right mm -hmm. because one of the things that I've learned is that 
usually when sessions get really hard, there is some sort of transference. And a lot of time mm -hmm. when, for me too, sort of the anxious pursuer can come out, it's because I care so deeply and I mm -hmm. want them to succeed. And sometimes it almost feels like I want it more than they do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll run into a situation where I've got, you know, there's a there's an anxious pursuer who I just sort of relate with, you know. Mm -hmm. And then there's a withdrawer who is, you know, very quiet and maybe even stonewalling. And I have to be so careful because my natural tendency would be to sort of have an alliance with the pursuer mm -hmm. and tell the withdrawer, come on, why don't you open up, right? And so really it's the supervision for me and stepping back and looking at that, which is hard to do, mm -hmm. right? W which makes it so that I can start being there and truly empathize and have presence with that withdrawer, even though it's not my natural thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, what about for you, Wesley? Well, I mean, I think, you know, what, what, with what you guys are saying, it, tell, it helps me think about, like, why, why I stick with EFT or what, like, because I think the, the beautiful part about EFT and why I feel like it's a lifelong model is that you're, you will always be getting better. Like, it's right. constant refinement. There, I don't think there is a plateau you hit where you're like, that's it. I've totally got it. Yeah. And, and as, as someone who really wants to be a therapist for the rest of my life, like I find that really appealing because mm -hmm. there's that intellectual challenge. And, mm -hmm. and I think you know, the other side of that is that it, I think it really brings out the best in therapists. You know, mm -hmm. I think it, I mean, I think it's like the Navy SEALs of emotional work, you know, it's where right. you just, it's right. so hard, but yeah. that refinement process is right. also beneficial. Um, but I think you have to, as a therapist, you have to know like how to take care of yourself too, because right. I, I mean, I don't have a day where I feel a hundred percent successful mm -hmm. that day. Like I don't, I don't have those days. Maybe other people do, but I have to have a way to sort of be gentle with the fact that I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not where I wish I were. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's funny, I like how you mentioned the yeah. plateaus, and I feel like in EFT, the plateau is kind of the opposite as it is everywhere else, where when you hit the plateau, it's like, I realize there's something I'm not getting. I need to go <laughs> yeah. deeper. I need more right. training. Get me a mayday, mayday. I'm missing something, right, you know, which, right. which I find happens over and over throughout my journey. It's like, you know, just like our clients digest the cycle at different levels and different rates. They don't all like, okay, first session, boom, we got the cycle, we're good to go, right? Well, we don't really digest, you know, helping them with that the same way either. So I found, you know, like, oh, I kind of got this great overview. I thought I had an idea. And then you sort of start to go deeper. And you really try to practice those skills. And then you just keep practicing a new move or a different part of the model. Or, and I noticed, I don't know if you guys did, as soon as you start to get better at one part or, or, feel like you're starting to know what you're doing, then you'll have more difficult and challenging clients come in right. and they sort of stretch you and you're like, ah, I've run up against that glass ceiling again. I need, I need more training. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and, I, and I, I would say for me, that really has happened in the last four or five months because I finished up my certification four months ago and just what happened, and it's, I know it comes and goes, but in the next two months, it seemed like I got five or six new couples who were just highly, highly reactive, a lot of trauma, a lot of affairs, right? And it was mm -hmm. just intense. Mm -hmm. and, and I agree with what you're both saying is I've really had to and still really work with myself around expectations, right? Because mm -hmm. if I go into these sessions having a lot of expectations of where I want them to go, they may not be ready to go there, right? Mm -hmm. And a big part of me staying empathetic and having what we call presence with them, right, mm -hmm. is I have to be with them where they are. And I always have, uh, and, I, and, and I notice I have to work with myself because if I'm getting anxious or feeling some shame, like, oh, I'm doing this wrong or I'm not a good enough therapist in this oh, moment, yeah. then suddenly I'm like up in my head, I'm no longer with them, right? And that's mm -hmm. one thing I love about EFT mm -hmm. is that, you know, the, the, the steps and stages help me to just get back, helps me like ground myself, mm -hmm. like during the session and like, Here's a great one that I learned, and this is a trick I learned from, from Rebecca Jorgensen. They call it a, I don't know if trick is right, but it's something that helps, right? Mm -hmm. And that is that when I'm in session and something's going maybe the wrong way or there's a lot of content or, or the, 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 the clients are nodding in their feelings and it feels out of control, I just take my pad of pa pa paper and I write on there something like, slow down. I'll write it like four times. And I will just tell the clients in just a minute, I want to just 
make sure that I share this one thing with you because this is very important. But in that moment, all I'm doing is slowing down because I'm giving my spells time mm -hmm. to see if I can actually come to something important, right? But it's mm -hmm. just, it helps me to be able to, to, to slow it down and give myself a chance to catch up, mm -hmm. right? Because there's nothing worse than, than trying to sort of pretend mm -hmm. that you're doing well. Oh right? Have, yeah. you ever, have you ever been there? Fake it till you make it. Does it work so well? Or it's right <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and then for me, it's like, I, I start thinking about their family and their children. Oh my God. And, and how like responsible I feel. Starving children. Exactly. And it gets so dramatic. It gets so hard. dramatic, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that's when I could just like slap myself. <laughs> Wesley, I saw you really like sort of um, feeling with when he was talking about, and I think this comes up for all of us, that I'm not good enough as a therapist. I think all of you feel that when you're learning EFT. Yes. Wesley, I saw you really relating to that. Tell us more. Yeah, I mean, I just don't know, like, I don't know how, how to not feel that because I think, you know, we want so badly to help the people in front of us. And we, like, I see the love, you know, I can see the love that they have for each other. And I can see where they're caught. And I just mm -hmm. think, oh, if I could just project everything that's in my head mm -hmm. right. into your brains, like, this would be fixed. You mm -hmm. could fix this. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think at least, I mean, I think it's, it's very rare that I have a session where I don't have moments where I think, oh God, I don't know the right thing here. Mm -hmm. And I'm certified, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, so that's, that's, that's realism, folks. Like, that's <laughs> part of it. Um, and so, yeah, I just think that's part of it. And I try to just notice those thoughts and notice that that's what's happening. And I, I think, I like how you were saying there's sort of like, it almost like a mantra you go back to, you know, yeah. just something to ground yourself. Yeah, just to slow it down. And for me, like, I just think my job is to love them. Like, my job is to hold mm. both of these people in love. My job is to see what is good in them. Mm -hmm. And if I do that, mm -hmm. even if, you know, I'm not saving the marriage today, mm -hmm. I'm doing something positive for them. Right. 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 Well, well, you know what? I, I had an experience about a month ago. Um, one of the great um, Facebook groups that I'm a part of, the you two are also, that Rebecca Jorgensen runs. Um, I just put a note out, out there about a month ago about a day that I had where I had like two sessions that felt like they were, went wonderfully. There was bombing, there was crying, it was perfect. And then two sessions that were just so hard. Yeah. And I walked out of this, those sessions really wondering like, did anything good happen here, right? And it was that contrast. And I remember putting a, that, that out there and saying, do any of you relate to this? And it was just like, I mean, yeah. there were like 25 people who came in and just were reporting to the same thing. Mm -hmm. And these were a lot of very senior people who have been mm -hmm. doing this for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so it just helped me see that a lot of times, also what I have to tell myself is even when I don't notice or I don't think that there's work mm -hmm. going on, there is work going mm -hmm. on, right? Mm -hmm. And I just have to yeah. be really careful about that inner critic. Yeah. That's part of, you know, when Sue talks about kind of helicoptering, you know, because the amygdala that kicks online, that threat cue comes across, and even we as therapists experience that. That's the dual process of EFT. You know, as our clients experience that between them, we also experience that, the pleaser in us. And even if you're not a people pleaser, you want to run a successful business. And if you have no mm -hmm. clients, you can't have a successful business. So this part that's like, uh-oh, uh-oh, danger, danger. They're getting really upset and I'm making them upset. And, right. you know, I think a lot of us have had this illusion that, you know, after you go through core skills and you get certified that suddenly now you're an expert and right. you're good to go, you got a handle on it, you know what, you know, you know it well enough and, you know, you don't ever get lost. And, and I even thought about that, that happens with trainers. And I was told that Sue Johnson had, you know, at a, one of the trainers with the train, trainings with the trainers that she got stuck and they did kind of like round robin role play to help her figure it out. And it felt so validating. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. moments I'll sit in the session and I'm, you know, I'm with the couple. I do the, the Scott Woolley hand thing. Yeah. Like, you know, he just does such a cool hand gestures, right? And I'm trying to attune and it's somebody that just does not want to let me in, mm -hmm. right? We, you get those people that you're trying to move into their emotions. They're like, mm -mm, nope, mm -hmm. nope. 
And I'm sitting there thinking in my head, gosh, a more seasoned therapist, Rebecca Jorgensen would have had them out of here already. And right. here I am, like six months, and oh God, <laughs> you know, and that, that failure, that imposter syndrome comes out. And I find that struggle is so familiar to everyone learning EFT, and partly because we really care, we want to do a good job. And, you know, as we talked about, we just, shot a special project video, which you guys will hopefully get a chance to see. Um, we talked about Masters of Empathy, which mm -hmm. EFT really does an amazing job mm -hmm. at doing better than, than hands down any model of counseling out there. And part of this, and this comes together with what I mentioned about having to do the work yourself. And if you don't do the work, you're gonna run into it and it's gonna impact your work. You know, if you're a withdrawal therapist, you may have a hard time going into that deep emotion if you're not comfortable with emotion, so you may pull back, go into your head, and not go as deep as you need to. Um, so in order to have that relentless empathy, you know, um, I guess you could think of it as, you know, Carl Rogers would put unconditional positive regard. Well, in attachment, we call it relentless empathy. Right? <laughs> right, I love that. To feel empathy with somebody requires you to be able to feel period, right? Because empathy, as Brene Brown talks about, is it has to resonate with the part of you that has the memory of that feeling, right? It's not about you, and it's not, you don't want to get activated and then have it take you away, right. but it's like an echo chamber where it resonates through you and it allows you to be with the client and understand them and feel with them in a way that they feel accepted and loved and understood. And if you block that path, this is where we see our clients complain, my partner doesn't have empathy. And you find that with people who try to numb out and shut down their emotions, well, they've closed mm -hmm. the echo chamber, right? Mm -hmm. If they right. can't feel, it's hard to feel your partner's pain if you're not allowing yourself to resonate even with your own pain. Right. I mean, early on, I remember watching some work that Rebecca Jorgensen did also, my, uh, su su my supervisor, Debbie Gilmore, and there were a couple of moments, right, when I saw them, when things did look like they were difficult or I wasn't sure what was happening in the session, and then I saw the therapist would say something like, would go to how they were feeling. I mean, I remember one where Rebecca talked about, you know, when I hear this going on, it was a very reactive moment. She mm -hmm. shared like, wow, this is what happens for me is I actually feel feel sad for you too. And I, and I was really, impressed with that and I've tried to find a way to accurately and correctly you know use my own emotional experience mm -hmm. to sometimes model for them mm -hmm. what they need to do and that's only available to me in EFT like that would have been ne I would have never thought of doing that as a co cognitive therapist. Mm -hmm. What about for you because you've written extensively about the vulnerable process and empathy on your blog can you tell everyone a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, I write, I write from a really, um, I would describe it as sort of like a raw kind of vulnerable place because I don't, because I, I want everyone to feel less alone, you know, with that. And I, I always, just like you're saying with hearing about Sue and the trainers, like it's so relieving to know that people who are that expert struggle. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, I really think that's part of how we keep keep going in the model you know it really like it really breaks my heart when i hear about couples therapists who completely stop because they feel like they're failing right. at it and right. i think we're all we all feel like we're failing you know right. um and so if, they, if i think that's why you know kind of going to the community and i think I think, I don't know many EFT therapists who are very good at being empathetic with themselves, myself included, and right. I feel like um, George Fowler does a really good job and other trainers do a really good job of reminding us that, you know, just like you're saying, like if they don't feel empathy for themselves, it's even harder to feel it for others. Like we have to feel that empathy for ourselves mm -hmm. and trust that we're still trying to get better. Like if we're kind to ourselves, it doesn't mean that we're not Right. trying really right, hard, right. which I think is, that can be the sort of, um, it's called something, I don't the know. reframe? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, like where you just have to remind yourself, like, just because I'm not banging my head against a wall for three hours, like, it's okay to give myself a night where I'm right. saying, okay, you tried your best. Yeah. And putting on that EFT lens, so you, again, 
EFT makes that congruent authenticity. You're walking the talk, you're living it all the time. And we wear that EFT lens when we look at ourselves, when we look at our colleagues, our trainers, just everybody now in the world. You have a whole new set of eyes. And yeah. you said um, something, you know, like, you know, beating your head against the wall. And, you know, a lot of therapists like, oh, you know, I feel like I suck. And so I start pulling back. And, you know, it's like, that's where you get stuck, right? That reframe. Right. You're a good therapist because you care, and you care enough to see that you're stuck. And now, what do you want to do with that stuckness, right? Mm -hmm. right? There's there's that cycle again. That's the process for the therapist, right? What's my cycle when I'm doing therapy as the therapist, right? right. Yeah. Well, and that re re that re reminds me of I think it was the early on, maybe the first month when I was starting to, to tape, and I was sitting there with my super, super my supervisor, and of course, in that moment, I was just seeing all the things that I was doing wrong, and mm -hmm. I was feeling so anxious and almost really crying. Mm -hmm. And she stopped and she said, what is going on with you? And I said, well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm doing this poorly and this poorly and this poorly. And she just said, you need to stop, and you need to see the good things that you're doing. And she went mm -hmm. through, through and showed me, and she said, yeah, Ed, yeah, you're not the master EFT therapist, but you're still training, mm -hmm. right? And it really was important because she almost kind of had to wake me up to, to get to try to calm down that inner critic because partly what, what she said is if you're that hard on yourself, you're going to be in that much shame, you're not going to be available to the client, right? Yeah. And you can't have those mirror neurons mm -hmm. firing together if mm -hmm. I'm stuck up in this kind of an ego process of am I good or not? Well, and I think too, EFT looks deceivingly simple right. when you first learn it and you see it. And so we all, you know, again, because we, I, I think EFT, sorry, I think EFT therapists are the cream of the crop, top therapists in the world. And I'm not to say that there aren't some exceptions, but, um, you know, I think we all, when we come out of the externships or core skills, we sort of have this expectation that we're going to be the best and we're, you know, mastering the model and it can feel so deflating when mm -hmm. we're in session and we realize I haven't mastered it. Even after you're certified, shame still comes up like, I sort of understood that before, but now it just clicked into place and I totally get it. And now I'm embarrassed that I got it now and I didn't really get it before because right. I'm certified. <laughs> <laughs> that's normal, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's totally normal. <laughs> yeah. So, and you know, I just love, you know, reading your blog, you talk about that rawness, that tenderness, you know, just being able to walk in the shoes of the client, bringing our authentic self, because inevitably what we're feeling, you know, like if you're a withdrawer, if you do the work and you go through the experience yourself, you're better equipped to meet the client in that place, because that's what they're going through. Yeah, I mean, and I think, you know, it it's helps me to, just focus back in on like we're working with humans we're working with people it's nuanced it's complex we have a beautiful model you know that if i could do it perfectly i trust could walk me through any scenario um but i think there are moments where i just really want to soak in like the humanity of the person in front of me and you know maybe it means i have longer like i take longer like i I would love it if I could help couples heal in 12 sessions, but right. you know that's that doesn't often happen for me. So I just have to remind myself that like I don't want to miss like caring about this person in front of me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the coolest parts of EFT um, is that it makes room for our own humanness, and you know, of course, along with the ethical codes, it's not about our humanness, but. It allows us to bring our humanness alongside someone else's humanness, which is often what they're missing out on. They need somebody to be right by their side saying, I get this, you're not crazy for feeling this way. In fact, it makes total sense why this is happening or why you're feeling these things. And it just feels so good for them to know that somebody's mm -hmm. there that gets them, even if you cry in session, right? Yeah. A lot of models are like, you know, the kind of psychoanalytic, you gotta be that blank slate and the client projects everything. And this is like, I'm bringing me as mm -hmm. I am. And, 
you know, sure, when you cry, again, it's not about you, but it's right. about coming alongside the clients. And sometimes they share stories that are so painful that it almost feels cruel not to cry. Right. I mean, it right. just, yeah. it's right. so deep. And those moments I found my clients have said have been so powerful. They're like, I felt so sad inside, but when I saw the tear run down your cheek, I just lost it. It was so powerful for me. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we, we see exactly, and that's, um, and part of that to me is why I found that the community of therapists and having people like you two and people around the country who I'm connected to um, and people that I can call, you know, whether it's a Facebook page, where I can go for support is so important, and that's what I would tell anyone who's learning this oh, model yeah. because. I think a lot of people try to learn this model sort of in isolation, yeah. and they think that they can yeah. take, you know, the extra externship and then core skills, and then just sort of do it by themselves. And or I learn found, it online, right? Mm -hmm. And I found that um, that it's for me a lot of the most important learning that I've had is it's after the session and it's working through my own em emotions, looking at tapes, um, and so I just think that it's it's mm -hmm. so important to have this kind of connection because I think that as therapists just in general one of the shadows is that we get too isolated you know I think that's one of the things that's great about the EFT community is that it's mm -hmm. definitely a norm and it's pushed mm -hmm. that we should be supporting mm -hmm. each other because oh, it, it's yeah. it's too hard to do it by yourself no it is and I, I love what you're saying about the isolation piece you know that you know and I think that's why Annabelle your YouTube series I think is so important for the community and it's also amazing that you do it for free you know because trainings are expensive all of it is expensive and then I think you get through core skills and you realize I mean this this was a realization that both my husband and I you know struggled to get to of like we are going to have to keep paying to learn this mm -hmm. for a long time right and so the fact that you bring trainers into people's living rooms for free and help, like I'll go back and rewatch some of the interviews you've done. Like I'll rewatch the Lori Brubacher ones. That Becca Jorgensen one on shame oh, was like a machete. That was, like, was oh, amazing. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. I mean, the George Fowler one is incredible. Like I just, I think that I, that's, I love that about EFT therapists. Like I feel like we want to pour back into mm -hmm. that community right. and give, right. give people as much as they can Receive right, right, and that actually was. I think one of the first experiences that I had, which was like one of those jaw dropping, life changing experiences of watching one of your vi videos, is one that you did a while back with um, Catherine Ream mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. Baltimore. And you were talking with her, and I just remember something that came out that she said, and you, you said, and she talked about how in session, what, one of the things she tries to do is just just speak out loud what she's thinking, right, and just mm -hmm. be very sort of transparent. And say and, and be able to say, well, this is what I'm thinking and this is what I'm feeling, and just and that, and part of the reflection piece. Because I find less now, but earlier on, I would really sort of edit a lot of the things that I was going to say before I said I said them. And what what I learned from that was really to trust your own experience and in you know as you're reflecting, just sort of like laying it out, like this is what I'm seeing, this is mm -hmm. this is what I see you doing, this is what I see mm -hmm. you doing, and just being very open in that way, because mm -hmm. that was a real shift for me. And this is sort of, you know, my funny EFT metaphor that I share with my supervisees. Um, the way I, you know, along that line of being transparent, and after all, EFT is about making the implicit explicit. I say, you know, it's kind of like show and tell, like in preschool or kindergarten, right? Everybody puts the pieces out on the floor. We all look, ooh, pretty, you know, and, and we do it together, you know, like we're all solving a puzzle together. So that's kind of what I do, you know, how I explain it is we sort of dump the pieces out on the floor and say, okay, let's sort through this mm -hmm. and make sense. I see this here, I see that there. Now let's see if we can't figure out how those fit together. And mm -hmm. the clients tend to really like it because A, it's validating, yes, you see what I'm seeing, you know, and you know how to help us move from here to, well, theoretically, most of the time we feel like we know how to help you. <laughs> Sometimes we get caught in that fear, you know, oh my gosh, like this is a challenging case, do I know what I'm doing? You know, that shame comes back up, but it's really an amazing process and that continuing to grow and pour into it and get fed, right? Get your mm -hmm. daily infusion because 
you know, as much as there's sessions where you come out feeling on top of the world, like, oh, I'm a great EFT therapist. There's sessions where you feel completely deflated or, you know, a client will present kind of the same dynamic, but just slightly different enough where it's got you scratching your head like, hmm, that's new. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and you're thinking, okay, what do I need to do next? And, you know, even I go back and watch the interviews. If you guys, you know, obviously you're going to see my channel. <laughs> um, you know, and I take notes. So many good stuff is happening. And thank you so much to our beloved trainers who offer their time and mm -hmm. talk about these special topics. But Part of what inspired me to do the series, too, is that when I went to the EFT Summit, which, by the way, guys, when the next one comes up, please go. It is just, ugh, you will feel so invigorated and reinvigorated and amazing. But when I went, I discovered there were a lot more trainers that I had never heard of. And mm -hmm. we can all sort of get locked into our little bubble. But, you know, I found that uh, all these different trainers have their own special niches and nuances and languaging that they use, which really helps us because mastering the EFT language is an art form unto itself. And that's been really helpful to help me advance. But I found each one offers just, you know, because our clients aren't cookie cutter, mm -hmm. right? They mm -hmm. are all slightly different and you need to have language that's adaptable to really be able to meet them in their place and help them feel like, okay, this person gets me. So it's helpful to have those little pieces from all the different trainers. Well, and I, and I, I was thinking about that because I had a, a colleague in, Sa in Salt Lake City last month who asked me sort of what books I read and mm -hmm. what I should do. And what I realized is one of the things about EFT is that the language is so important, especially the way that we ask questions. And I love, there are so many great evocative questions. And I've gone through actually Lori Bru Brubaker's book on mm -hmm. stepping into EFT, mm -hmm. and I've made some lists from there, from Sue's books, some things that Rebecca and, and, and Scott have. And I've just, I, I realized that I, there were actual questions that weren't in my repertoire. So now I've, I've read, there probably, I have about a list of about 40 questions that really help me to get at emotion mm -hmm. in a different way. Mm -hmm. uh, because again, a lot of my training if you know, if I'm not if, if I'm not careful, you know, in session I'll say I'll, something will happen, and I'll say so. So what do you think about that, right? And as soon as I say that, I realize okay, that's really not what I want to know. I want to know what happens to you, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. we're we're you know really trying to to learn this that we are a bottom up therapy, right? Mm -hmm. We need to start with those those body cues and the emotions and, and move from the bottom up and all those good questions and all of the different books help me a ton. I do the same thing. I like, I'll write, like I'll read Lori's book and I'll write down, you know, just how she phrases things. Yep. And, and you know, the one thing about the uh, bottom up approach, a lot of people ask, why do we do that? What the heck is that about? And we talk about emotions, how important the emotions are. And one thing, you know, and I've noticed that a lot of the trainings, of the, as the trainers have grown and done more and more lives and they've cultivated their own training materials, you know, um, Scott Woolley, one of our trainers from San Diego, you know, talked about state-dependent learning. Mm. That was the piece that clicked it all into place, was that's why we want them to get into the emotions because mm. you learn different things in different states. Mm. So in session, we're trying to bring mm. the client down to that state, that emotional state, and help them learn something new because when they're at home, they're going to be in that state. They're not going to be up here and you know they're not going to be able to talk across you know mm -hmm. or down from brain to emotion right so you want to get them into their emotion and have their emotion start informing their brain the two come together and help make a decision about behavior but you want to get them into that state because if you're just talking you know cognitively when they're at home they're not having a fight cognitively you know right. well maybe some of our couples it's debatable but <laughs> they think they're having it yes <laughs> yes yes but it's really in that emotional state so we want to switch states mm -hmm. from cognitive to emotional so that we can help that deeper learning transform and take place right. well and that's why it's helped me so much in, yeah, in learning from scott and rebecca and others is just i have to keep reminding myself to to really work to help the clients get more awareness around you know, just that what's the you know what's the first thing what, what when they 
when they notice that something's up, when they, when they feel that danger cue, right? Where in their body do they feel it? Is it a tight stomach? Is it a tight chest, right? And just getting them to go there first and then trying to help them identify what feeling goes with that. Um, and I still, because it, it's so much more powerful when we do that, but for me it only works if I really slow it down. Mm -hmm. just, because if you don't slow that down, you miss that. Well, and slowing it down also helps us because our nervous system kicks on and we get activated mm -hmm. and we go into our own fight or flight mode, right? right? Mm -hmm. So it helps us sort of, okay. Yeah. yeah. So guys, can you, you know, before we wrap up, how about you guys quickly talk about the process of getting certified? You know, there's a lot of therapists who have been practicing EFT for a while. They're kind of on the fence. They're not sure. Tell everyone why you chose to get certified and how that really helped you. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, in some ways, it's almost like hard to answer because I, I never thought, I never considered not getting certified. Um, I think I just fell so hard in love with this model that I really felt like this is, this is the path I want to be on. Um, and I also, like, for me, it just felt really important that I, I knew that I was, I was counseling at a level that the EFT pantheon, so to speak, mm -hmm. felt what, like was certification mm -hmm. level. Um, I also think it makes you a better therapist to go through the certification process. Um, and I would imagine even going through the supervision process, which I, which I haven't started, but I would imagine that even makes you better as a therapist. Right, sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I think for me, it sort of started at the beginning. I remember a conversation that I had with Ryan Rana uh, mm -hmm. back in St. Louis, and it really, I asked him if he remembered this, and he said he didn't, but it really helped me, because I was talking about, wow, there's all this training, and, and I was doing the math, looking how expensive it was gonna do to yeah. get from externship to, certification and I asked him you know do I really need to do this can I just read the books and do it on, on my own and, and and he said he said Ed he said basically not getting trained correctly in this will be the most expensive thing you ever do well, that's a good way to right because <laughs> really his point was that, yeah. is that is that so that, so it's so easy to do it sort of halfway and think that you have this and you really you really aren't going where you need to go until you move toward certification and again it was for me it was mm -hmm. it put me in a lot of um, uh, you know places where I felt uncomfortable where I needed to be which mm -hmm. was taping and watching mm -hmm. tapes mm -hmm. and then the whole process of doing the certification app app application and transcripts it mm -hmm. was really um, it, it was it, it took a, lot, a long time and it was hard but also it just I felt like it took my training to a different level and it just pushed me in a way that I need uh, that I needed to be pushed and uh, I'm just so glad I did it mm -hmm. I'm glad it's over mm -hmm. oh yeah <laughs> yeah I think you know becoming certified was probably the best investment I ever made and you know I'm just by nature a very ambitious person so when I set out on my career as a therapist I said I don't want to be just a therapist I don't want to be just a good therapist I want to be an amazing therapist mm -hmm. and when you get certified in something it really says to your clients that I take myself seriously and I know what I'm doing mm -hmm. and you know a good selling point to tell clients is hi I'm certified in the gold standard of couples counseling and your clients just have the sigh of relief thank goodness somebody knows what they're doing and how to help us. Right. Oh my God, it feels so good. And, and it's a great selling point. And people do find me now specifically because they've heard about EFT and want an EFT therapist. But really the process of going through getting certified really helps you refine your work, really makes you focus and make sure that what you're setting out to do, you're actually doing and helps you clean it up. And as I've been growing and wanting to get better, you know, because again, the learning doesn't stop at certification. You keep going and even becoming a supervisor. You know, now you have a second layer where you're helping other therapists do EFT and you've got to, you know, worry about that <laughs> too and your relationship with them and yeah. making sure you get experiential and not too psycho ed. But, you know, I just found that it really helped me focus, clean up my work and, you know, as I did that, you know, funny enough, after I got certified, I thought, yeah, I, I think I have a sense of what I'm doing now, right? I finally get it. But it's amazing stuff 
new stuff still clicks into place, or old stuff, or familiar stuff that I'd heard before just clicks on a whole new level. And, I mean, the process keeps going, you know? Well, right, and, and the one thing that I remember saying shortly after supervision when someone asked me how it's going is that what it really helped me get to was to really kind of own and internalize the, the map, the map of EFT, the, the steps and, and stages. And the way I feel about it now, again, is it's what gives me that sense of confidence going into sessions that are very experiential. It can be very messy and you don't know what you're doing. But it's like I, I now, I don't just know that the stages and, and steps, but they're internalized. Right. And so it gives me, it makes me just feel like I have a map and I can always go back to it, and I and I have a it gives me a sense of confidence, not cockiness, mm -hmm. right? Because right. it's super hard work, but I definitely mm -hmm. see my work getting better, and better. Right. It grounds you, and and I love how Sue said you have to learn the steps to lose them, right? right. When you're really grounded in them, and you really know them, and they're sort of in your bones. Then when you're in session, you know, because I think when you're first learning, your brain is so busy, both mm -hmm. trying to be present with the client, but busy trying to organize and understand what you're seeing with the client, and funnel it through the model, and where am I going next? And so your brain's really busy, and it's right. hard to be as awesome. But once you have that part, then it's like it becomes more natural, and I just know where to go and what to do, which is so helpful, you right. know, because you have that step-by-step -step map. If you get lost. You know, or you're asking for something, you have a map right there that says, okay, now here's what you're supposed to do with it. Right. And right. for me, that you only, I, I think you only get that through the process of super supervision. Because even after the ex ex externship and core skills, mm -hmm. it still wasn't in my body until I went mm -hmm. through certification. Mm -hmm. And again, thank you, Debbie, and thank you, Christine, because, wow, they helped me so much. Yeah. Yeah. What about for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think just just affirming what you all are saying, you know, I mean, I think that um, the, yeah, the, the process, you know, it's, I mean, I really think it takes everything from the therapist, but I think it gives back rewards beyond, you know, what you can imagine with becoming better and helping people mm -hmm. more and, you know, and then I think just like you're saying, like you, you think you know how something works, but I don't think, I, I think I'm trying to remember that that doesn't have to be a bad thing. Mm -hmm. to, to feel like, oh, I thought I understood how this move worked, or I thought I understood the, what a step five mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. and now I'm really getting what a step five mm -hmm. is. I mean, that's just part of it. I think everyone goes through that as right. they get mm -hmm. deeper. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I find as you continue to grow on your journey, your mind just continually, you know, gets blown away at the, ah. Oh, that light bulb comes, new yeah. solutions to old problems, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to old therapy, therapist problems, right? That's step eight, but for us, right? Hmm, maybe that's where I am in my own steps and stages. New solutions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So obviously, you know, we're all EFT nerding out, but you know, it's been a pleasure to talk with you guys today, yeah. to have you guys in, you know, we, I flew them in, well, I didn't fly them in, but they flew in from out of state so that we could all be here together. And it's just been absolutely incredible. You know, we all have this love of EFT and this desire to grow and be leaders in the community. So, you know, share your guys' your websites, how folks can find you and look you up. Okay. Um, I think that, yeah, if, if people um, want to find my blog, it's www.becomingatherapist.org. Um, and it's really just kind of following along with me as I'm learning this model. Um, and my website is wesleyann with an e little.com. So you can see my, that's more kind of for clients, but that's my therapy website. And with an e. And with an e. I love it. And with Green Gables. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. And for me, um, the website for my office where I'm a uh, founding member at the EFT clinic is um, www.theeftclinic.com, which is a great place where my, some of my blog posts are, are there. And then my wife, Candace and I, my wife is also a wonderful therapist. Um, we have our personal website at, at www.petersonfamilytherapy.com. And that's also where, I'm, where my blog is. And I'm trying to be more like Wesley and write my blog more often. 
I also need to be more like Wesley and write my blog more often. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> I need to start my blog. <laughs> you know, I'm behind, but I'm also writing an EFT book. And I think yes. I think you're doing a lot. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, Rebecca Jorgensen and I, she was my mentor, one of my mentors for my uh, dissertation, and I did my dissertation on competing attachment and romantic relationships, so working on getting academic articles published and writing my EFT book and, you know, now see? Don't, don't you know, burn out. Right? We need you. Self-care. Yeah, we need you. <laughs> but this is out. how much we love EFT. So if you're yeah. watching this video and you love EFT too, make sure that you go to ISEF.com. There's trainings listed, they're all around the country, and if you've taken an externship and you're not quite sure how to get connected, there's EFT groups on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Again, you can go online if there's a master class in your area. Chances are there's also a trainer or a community in your area, so don't miss the opportunity to get connected and find yourself an EFT buddy, even if they live across the country. Someone you can call, text, email, I'm stuck, help me. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing I did forget to mention is in Utah, we have a relatively new group, it's about a year and a half old, called the Northern Utah EFT group. And we have a web, a web page, uh, which is www.nueft.com. And we have a Facebook page. And for all the people in Utah, please, Call us, come see us, come play, come do EFT with us because we're excited that things are growing. And the last thing that I just want to say is if you really want to get a treat and really take yourself to the next level, you should go back and listen to all of Annabelle's videos, yes. right? Including this one that we're filming right now. Because they're so good. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much yeah. for being here today. It was such a delight. These two are pioneers themselves, and they're really helping to grow the EFT community in their areas. And, you know, hopefully to be the future leaders one day. Uh, we're going to continue our training and keep working to be awesome. And, uh, you know, we're, you can find us. We're accessible. And uh, just hit us up online and make sure that you guys subscribe because more EFT talk videos are coming to you soon.